Hey everybody, it's Mark Edward Lewis from Cinema Sound. Today we're going to be looking at another video from how to create musical scores and original soundtracks for your films and projects and picking the right music. Today we're going to be looking at EQ and how we use it specifically in in-the-box orchestra samples to try to create and recreate the sound of an orchestra in a hall and on a stage, maximizing realism. Let's roll. We're here in Logic Pro X uh, with a clip from my pilot, sci-fi sci pilot, Blade of Honor. Just a you know musical orchestra in the box with hybrid dubstep elements. And uh, here's what it sounds like. So lots of stuff, lots and lots of stuff going on there. And if you look at the track count, you'll see there's a few tracks that we've got loaded up here. But let's talk about EQ. I want to show you something here. This is uh, our friends from the uh, Oregon Symphony. And you can see just generally how an orchestra is laid out, that there are certain elements and instruments that are close to the audience and certain elements that are far from the audience. And you can see here the string section is much closer than, say, these guys and the per percussion over here. And what's, what you're not seeing over here, it's missing is a big nine-foot piano and, of course, the tube of the trombones and all that stuff. We want to take this into account when we're positioning our orchestra all around. Plus, having a depth so that even, you know, so that these kinds of guys back here are deeper in the stage reverb than these guys up here is super important for realism. Because if you were sitting down here in the audience, you would he not only hear the sound of the violins and, and strings before you would hear the brass and the percussion just because they're that far away. It's a pretty big stage. But also you would get the violins and everything else with much less of that stage reverb than the folks that are up against this back wall and all those kinds of things. So we want to be able to recreate that. We have a video uh, not only on where to pan all these instruments, but also where uh, how to drop them into that reverb. But one of the most important things we need to consider is EQ and how the sound uh, or the, the physics of this room actually affects, uh, in particular, the folks that are in the back, the percussion, the woodwinds, the horns, and the brass in general. Uh, and the strings, not so much. We don't really need to do a whole lot with a good string sample in order to create this realism. So let's go back here and I'll show you what I'm kind of doing. Let's just start with the celeste. I'm basically using the Vienna Ensemble Vanilla you know, circa mid-aughts celeste here. All right, no big deal. And what I'm doing, you can already see if you use Logic that I've got certainly uh, sp uh, a spatial reverb for the stage and then an EQ. Now look at this EQ curve. It's not exactly what you would expect. We're going to examine this. So let's just look at this high shelf roll off. What we want to do is roll off the very high frequencies the more an instrument goes further down or further upstage, in other words, further away from the audience, because that's what that stage would do. Not only the people that are sitting in front of the celeste in this case, the, the, the violin, first and second violins, and maybe some of the woodwinds blocking the sound, but also just the nature of distance and how uh, high frequencies and low frequencies are rolled off as we move further away. You can hear the difference here. In fact, I'm just going to turn this off and on. It still sounds fine, but it has a lot more of that high frequency chirp and mid range that just wouldn't really be there if this was positioned in the back. Let's look at this band here, the 2000 Hertz band. You can see we definitely want to roll that off. Let's see this. And that has sort of a weird honkiness to it, just by the nature of the sample. And then, of course, these high frequencies once again. And that adds to the realism. And you can do this with most of your, um, most of your uh, harp, percussion, things like this. We haven't rolled the harp off on this, the high frequencies on the harp off on this one, because uh, in this particular cue, we needed it to cut through because of some solo passages. But we definitely have it here at 3.30.
kind of the so we had to roll that off but if we did need to do that we would do the same kind of thing somewhere in the 7k zone a nice shelf and just kind of do that kind of a, a roll off there the other thing you can do which is probably even more effective is go to the bus and hopefully you've routed all of your di uh, disciplines of, of samples to their own bus so you can deal with them you, uh, on the whole. So for example, if I wanted to take my high woodwind bus and this is where all the woodwinds are, uh, where all the high woodwinds are, you can see just a very simple and somewhat elegant uh, EQ. I'm going to go back up here and put in our flute patch. Of course, it wants to do that because I have them linked. Uh, hold on a second here. We're going to go like this, unlink them. So now we can look at the flute. Let's see. And without... And on... off and while that's a very lovely sound it has way too many high frequencies that a flute player in an orchestra behind a whole bunch of violins would and violas and all that would never be heard and off in fact we might even draw it down a little bit more See, that's stuff we just would, we would never use. It would just not be real. And a lot of people make that mistake, expecting that, oh, the sample's got everything it needs. And it probably does, but we need to tone it down. Here's 3,400 hertz. And that's pretty nice. Let's take a listen to, uh, say, the English horn now. And again, with the, the EQ, let's, whoops, let's just do this EQ off. And on. So when we do, when we have instruments that are far back in the mix, far back in the stage is what I mean, upstage, away from the audience, we want to roll off those high frequencies uh, judiciously. Don't go crazy with it, of course, but it allows more realism because you're basically adding in the physics of the room itself. And um, it's not going to really be present even in samples that are, uh, you know, they have the room recorded built in there, although they do a pretty good job of that. You still want to be cognizant and be able to add, don't be afraid to add EQ to roll off high frequencies uh, in such a situation. Hopefully this video has been valuable to you as you move forward in your musical endeavors for multimedia. Uh, if so, please subscribe to this channel here and uh, take a look at all the hundreds of other videos that we have here on the Cinema Sound YouTube channel. And also come visit us at Cinema Sound and look at the hundreds and hundreds of articles that we have and videos and educational store products available for you so that you can get that Hollywood level immersive quality into your productions from here on. And hopefully we'll see you there. Until then, we'll see you in post.